Okay, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about this project that you have going on, Melvin. That that we should be talking about because I can talk football. You know, we could talk football all day long. Um, oh yeah. But this project, I thought, was very interesting, and it 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 comes at a, I think a very interesting time. What and, and let me set this up a little bit. Uh, I say interesting time because as COVID starts to, and I know it's still a factor. I know it's still out there. It's very real, but it's beginning to you know it's beginning to wane a little we're handling it we see programs and we see you know sports is returning and it's returning with restrictions and that kind of thing when things do get back up to speed schools are fully enrolled colleges are and and whatnot i i think we're going to be dealing with some real issues in terms of budget deficits and things of that nature be interesting to see you know what 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 these colleges are going to be working with in terms of resources uh and when i think resources i think about an, a, a group of institutions highly valued institution called the historically black colleges so you're doing a project and a program through lrt sports with the historically black colleges uh called the hbcu experience am i correct that's how yeah. that's what we're calling it okay yes, sir. i i that was something that drew me to you in the first place i thought this was really interesting so um Tell us what the HBCU experience. What was your what was your thought process going into this? Uh, uh, how did you come up with this particular program? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you know the HBCU experience is it's it's a really really close like topic to me, really near and dear to my heart. You know when you know when COVID this whole COVID thing really started, there was a lot of like a lot of uncertainty. We kind of began kind of surfacing our country with between yeah. the pandemic and then there became the, the racial division that kind of is the kind of going on with, with death of Brianna Taylor and you know like so much has been happening within the within the black and African American and just people community as well as people people of color in general that really yeah. has just really shone a light in my heart to say what can I do to do my part you know and it's really hard to kind of figure out how can I make an impact in a world yeah. of so much uncertainty, but yeah. knowing that I had a company that I was working with like LT Sports that really, really supported my ideas, gives you the, the space and the resources to kind of pursue your passions and really make an impact, I, yeah. I had to spring on it as soon as possible. And okay. I, remember just, I remember one day kind of bringing this idea up to my boss and she just absolutely loved it. And she said, please run with it. And immediately, ever since that day, we've been talking about it, like constantly, about, hey, mm-hmm. what do you need? Have you talked to this person? Have you talked to that person? Hey, like, let me okay. connect with this person. And you know, ever since then, like it was really taken off. I mean, both my parents, they are HBCU alums. My mother, she oh. went to Howard University. My okay. father went to North Carolina Central University. Yeah. My okay. on my dad's side, he start, he founded the Alpha Phi Alpha chapter and at Shaw okay. my, my dad <laughs> you know, my, dad's <laughs> alpha. my dad's an alpha, he's gonna love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. He love that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not getting ready to do the Alpha Phi Alpha chapter post grad. So, you know, like it's <laughs> it's it runs really really, really deep in our yeah. family. And I'm sad I didn't get you to have the HSU experience. I'm glad for for the education I, I received. I wish I had gotten had the recruitment from a, from the HBCU institution, but okay. you know that's still an experience that I want other people to be able to have. You know, okay. like the so value of HBCU experience is more than just an athletic experience. It's an yeah. academic experience. It's a cultural experience. Sure. It's a personal experience, and it's a social sure. experience. You know, it's a very holistic. Okay opportunity for a person to go through not only do you have an opportunity to learn more about you as an african-american and as a black person but you also even if you aren't african-american or black you still have an opportunity to be enveloped into this culture into a community of passion the community of love and a community of determination because these are a group this is these are a groups of minorities who are who are on this campus who work together hard together each and every day to find some way to make an impact in america and that's really the heart and soul of hbu is like how can we as people of color make the biggest impact in a space that we feel comfortable in and so sure. i really want to i really create this panel not only 
to kind of show the athletic opportunities, but really show all the other opportunities you have and really help encourage recruits, prospective recruits and current recruits, yep. as well as parents to kind of pursue HBCU education because you really have access to so much more than what is being told by the media or been told by Joe or Sam or whoever because sure. sure. Sir, so many stereotypes, so many, so many, so many false stigmas about HBCU, about HBCUs, yeah. and and people under people under the, under the assumption that their athletic experience is going to be less than that, their academic experience is going to be less than that, yeah. their living experience is going to be less than than any sure. other big school. But um, and but that may not, that's not necessarily always the case. So I really want people to open their eyes and kind of understand. Hey, these are some fine institutions. Have a have a sure. chance. Sit down, with them, talk with them. Hear their passion. Hear what hear what drives them to wake up every morning to drive a group of young women or young men to work to yes. come and play this work every day. Not only to see it on the field, but off the field. I, I think Melvin, that message is is, is dynamic um, and, and well well, well articulated. Um, you know, I think about the HBCUs, you, you've got some esteemed institutions. You've got Howard, Hampton, Morehouse, Spellman. Uh, I told you a little, a little story about Spellman when we first talked. I mean, you've got esteemed, valued institutions. I think that, that probably the biggest challenge um, uh, uh, beyond what the, the you know, the, the, the known challenges of, of financial challenges, things of that nature. Uh, but can you can you really sell an HBCU? Okay, here's here's where the rubber meets the road. Can you really sell an HBCU uh, to uh, you know to an athlete who maybe has higher potential to be somewhere at a higher level, but they're going to is there is there the thought that there's a sacrifice to go to a Howard, a Morehouse, a you know whatever when they could be at Texas A&M, they could be at you know they could be at North Carolina, they could be at Clemson. Is that is that realistic? I think I think that I think that is I think that is realistic. I think that okay. first and foremost, um, I think first first and foremost, it has to start with the recruits. You know, there is yeah. like you know, like every business that that begins from zero to a multi million or billion dollar company, there has to be people who are who are willing to take the the beginning scraps before the before the meal is created and there's gonna have to be those recruits who are saying hey you know what this locker room may not have stainless steel and neon lights and uh the phone charger in my locker but you know what there's a program i can i can develop around there's somewhere where i can leave a legacy at and sure. i can bring people with me and the thing is that the more recruits who decide to make that switch the more more people begin to turn attention to HBCUs, the more the institution is able to build up revenue and the more yeah. resources and, and the more they're able to compete with Power Fire programs. You can't expect for a, you can't expect for a non-Power Fire program to have the same locker room as, as University of Kentucky or Alabama without, without, without their level of support. Like that's sure. just not, that's not practical on, on, in anybody's eyes so yeah. in order for them to get there we also we have to have the people to facilitate that kind of interest and we are we're having players do that now i mean yeah. we have we have four star we have we, there's a five-star back player that that committed to howard there was a five-star that uh actually committed to florida AM, amu famu and um FAMU. Uh -huh. last year i mean uh -huh. there's there's players this play there's four or five-star recruits going going to hbcus but like, what I want to see, do is see that become more of a trend because you only see yeah. four or five articles here. But what I want to see is that being more regular, just as yeah. I, want, I want Howard University to pop up in a conversation with Alabama as if they're just yeah. another school, you know? Because once yeah. once it become conversational, that's how yeah. you know that they've made it on the radar because it's not yeah. something that you're consciously thinking about. It's already in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that, you know, obviously with the HBCU experience that you're putting on, having an educational understanding, getting not understanding what these places are about, the types of coaches that are there, the administration right. that's there, the support that's there, et cetera, 
you know, I, I think for the longest time, of course, you know, with, with Dion going to Jackson State, that, that, that could be a whole new dynamic. And right, Dion, exactly. D- Coach Sanders, I hope you're going to be a part of this. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on and join us. All right. Uh, but I think, you know, I think that that is probably something that can change the dynamic, certainly. And you mentioned something else in the midst of this conversation as well, too. And you mentioned something about non-minority students participating in the HBCU experience and having experience themselves and what they might gain from that socially, uh, academically, uh, uh, you know, uh, athletically, whatever that might be, whatever their chosen path is. And, and I think about that. I'm like, OK, uh, that's viable. Um, why would someone who is not black go to an HBCU? Is that realistic? Does that, I I know I've seen it. I've seen it uh, certainly on the athletic side of things. Uh, Is that realistic? Does that happen? Would that be something to take into consideration? You know, I, I would encourage maybe, I, yeah, I would definitely encourage for people to pursue HBCU educations because not to take over the space but <laughs> right right that as an opportunity to educate yourself i think education is the best thing that that we as a country could use right now it is not yes. because it's, it's because there's so much that have happened that yes. people are not fully informed as to what has happened in that in the past so i think when you go to an hbcu the curriculum is different because because it represent it, it represents the minority Therefore, the curricular also also identifies the minority and a little bit more than what your typical curriculum may. So this is an opportunity for you to like not only learn more about that in your curriculum, but also be around black people, be around yeah. young people, yes. be around different, yes. different yes. types of ethnicities, and have a, have an opportunity to truly learn what does it mean to be a minority in this country. And you know, education is the best way for change. And yes. I'm, whether you're on the right side or the left side, all you can do is educate yourself. That's really all yes. you can do, you know? Yes, yes. I, I think you, you nailed it. The idea that uh, education really is the pathway. Um, I, will, I, will, I will promote that a thousand percent till the day I'm six feet under. And that's the way uh, my parents uh, believed in. They took that path. And um, I, I'm pretty sure your parents believe the same thing. And there are many others out there that believe the same thing. It, it's a combination. And I think the very nature and the very title of what you're trying to do, HBCU experience, the education is one side of it. But I think it's appropriate to call it an experience because if you, until you've experienced these things yourselves, right. if you've experienced yourself, you could experience the social dynamics of an African American experience, you don't know, you don't know what you're dealing with. And right. if you don't know what that is, you have a tendency to be uh, hesitant <laughs> about things. You, you, right? That's probably why we're seeing a lot of this. You don't have any idea what the experience is like, okay? Right. On both sides, okay? On all sides. And once you know what the experience is like, you have a lot more tolerance and understanding of it. Okay. Exactly. That, 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 so I think, your, I think your program is going to be fantastic. Uh, are you, are you real? Are you revealing who's going to be on the program yet? Or is that kind of a, is that a secret or how, how are you guys dealing with that? And who are we, I mean, we it, talk to me about what the program will consist of that webinar and who should, who should be, who should be listening at? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's gonna, like I said, it's going to be a, a great webinar. It's a great opportunity for everybody to kind of join in on the, on, on the webinar. What, we, what I really want to make sure was that everybody had something to listen to. So as, as a result, we have coaches representing multiple schools covering various sports. We have right. uh, from North Carolina, North Carolina A&T, uh, Coach um, Duan Ross. He is the director, director of programs for of track and field. We call okay. Coach Hal Clifton. He's the head coach of the women's volleyball team there okay. um, from Southern okay. University. We have uh, Coach Carrick Jackson, number, but I just do want to say that they are the number one baseball program in the, uh, for HBC, so go okay. Jags. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, sir. We have, um, we have, we have um, the assistant basketball coach from Hampton University, Canna Cole. She was just named 30, 30 under 30 for uh, women's coaches, so we're super yeah. Super excited to have her on the panel. Um, we also have Coach Ryan Ryder from uh, from the men's basketball coach from Bethune Cookman, and 
we also have the uh, head football coach Reggie Barlow from uh, Virginia State University as well. Yeah. yeah. So, you oh, know, okay. Covering football, basketball for both men and women, Excellent. baseball, volleyball, and track and field. If you want to be a dual sport athlete, looking to explore, uh, looking to explore two sports in college, looking to sure. explore one sport, we have we've covered we've covered most of the major sports in college. So, okay. you know, okay. it's a great opportunity okay. for you to kind of learn more and okay. really ask them the questions that you want to that you want to know. Uh, why don't you go ahead, Melvin? Right now, this is a good time for shameless plugs, <laughs> and you plugged it a little bit. But on top of that, where do who who should come on the show? Where do they go to get on, and what's the process for them to get on? When, where, what time? Tell me all of that so that our audience knows. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So, we're, yeah. So, if you're if you're a prospective recruit, if you're just looking to looking to play sports in college, if you're just not quite sure whether or not what your path is feel free to sign up. Um, it's on, it's, this is a Zoom webinar, so you don't have to go anywhere. It's, it's on w next Wednesday um, on October 14th at 8 p.m. Okay. Um, what we do have when you, when you sign up on our Zoom link, you can pre-register. And when you pre-register, you can also submit a question. Um, the NCAA has, has put into place, they push back their no direct contact with college coaches until January 1st. So right. this is an opportunity for you to get in touch with a college coach without violating NCAA regulation. That's a good point. You know, that's a good point, Melvin. You're talking about coaches that will be right there in front of you, correct? They, and you said 8 p.m. October 14th, 8 p.m. Eastern? Yes, sir. 8 p.m. Eastern okay. time. Yes, gotcha. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Yeah, you're right. That is a really good, that's a unique opportunity to be yes. in front of and online with these, with these gentlemen. Will, the, will there be a discussion? I, I know it's probably you're expecting a, a, a quite a few people on board. Are there questions and answer sessions? What, will that happen as well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there, so, yes, sir. So there will be several Q&A sessions. We're, we're going to allow for the coaches to kind of talk about their program, individual programs, talk about okay. their time at the HBCU, if there were HBCU alums, and just talking okay. about their experience as a coach, why they're coaching at HBCU, and then we're going to open up the floor for questions and really just really allow for most of the panel to be us having, having the coaches answer questions because the most important okay. thing for you guys is for you to make sure that you feel like your, answer, your questions are being answered and that you feel like you have a true understanding of the HBCU experience. Excellent. Melvin, I got, I got to tell you, it sounds absolutely outstanding. It should be a lot of fun next Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, the 14th, 8 yes, p.m. Sir. Eastern. You can go to lrtsports.com, I imagine, and, and find the link. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. lrtsports.com. Okay. Um, if you go on the our workshops tab, click that, okay. and, and it'll bring you right toward, um, right to the HBCU Experience Coaches Panel. Okay. Click okay. on register there. It's free to, free to sign up. No payment. Nothing. Fantastic. Super clear. Yes, sir. Fantastic. That's the, that's the good part that you don't pay a dime. We will add this information to the show at the end. You can catch, you can catch the links. We'll add that to the end of the show and you'll be able to get that information and go right on in and, and sign up for the webinar. We encourage you to do it. It's a unique opportunity and a unique time to connect directly with college coaches and something you don't have a chance to do right now based on NCAA regulations. Melvin Briggs, a second. Melvin, thank you. I know you're a sports guy. I see the, look at, you got the, you got the, uh, something going on in the background there. That's, got, that's I Lamar Jackson. Hey, no, I, Lamar Jackson right there. More than just I a running back. I love it. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it, man. I love it. They might, somebody might, you know what, all these running backs going down, they might give you a call, Melvin. Don't be, uh, hey. don't be scared. Can you still go or what? My phone's always open, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you might get a call, Melvin. You might get a call. It's wonderful having you on the show, The Thank Real you. 100. Melvin Briggs the second. Wish you all the luck. I know that we have another show coming up with you and your uh, founder and CEO, Kirsten Sires, uh, uh, soon after this show as well, too. And look forward to talking to you again then, too. And we'll talk about it a little bit more together. Okay? Thank you, David. It's been a pleasure being on the show with you. Thank you, Melvin. Take care. <laughs>